I'm Bill. And I'm Candace. And, and we're, we're the, the disruptors. disruptors. I'm so excited. What are we going to tear up now? You know, we are tying it all together. We've had uh, customer experience. So we're uh, conversations over the last few weeks. This is our, I guess this is our third week. This is our third week. So we're going to tie it all together. I'm sorry I didn't give you a calendar. That's okay. okay. I understand. Welcome to the show, Chris. Thank you. We're glad that you're back for more abuse. Well, who else am I going to get it from? (laughs) Well, now that you, we can ask the viewers out there. Oh, wait a minute. The viewers, the listeners out there. To you know, send in suggestions and how we can abuse you. Well, you could do that, yeah, but I think they'd fun. rather abuse you than abuse me. Okay, moving on with the show. I see I have two again. One, <laughs> <laughs> yay! Yay! <laughs> Candace, how do we tie this all together? You know, we've we've talked about so many points in the last two shows. Well, how do we tie this all together? Well, one of the things is that by tying it together is that we really want to talk about is with the customer experience, what is the journey? So what does the journey actually look like? So we're going to talk a little bit about their intake, taking on what their intake process might be, and that intake process, depending upon whether you're in retail um, or if it's done online, what's the greeting? Ah, okay. You know, setting up that experience maybe prior to a meeting. So we're gonna we're gonna dive in a little bit to that. Um, so what are some intake processes that you guys have enjoyed? I don't want to hear what we don't like. What what have we liked? Oh, then you don't want to hear about Walter at Walmart then saying. No, I don't want to hear negative. I want to hear something that. that's really positive. I kind okay, of liked I'll, it. There. I'll tell you the one intake that I enjoy is when I go down to the corner market, and Jack says, "Chris, how you doing today?" You know, there's nothing better than somebody knowing your name that you're going to purchase their services or their their products and they know who you are. So for the little guy, it's knowing my name. It really is. And uh, I I don't think I can get any more enjoyment than being able to say, hey Jack, how are you doing? So it's it's a good thing. Well, I remember when we would go to De Laurentiis in Seattle, wow. whoop, whoop, Fike Street, wow. there's a shout out, um, and we would come through the door and they knew our names. Yeah. And that was always, hey, Chris and Candace, I'll be right with you. Do you guys like on a website when either a bot or they've already got it programmed on a website where it says, hi, welcome to our website, or... Hi, you know, welcome to Joanne's. Does I, that does that bother you? No, actually, that would be kind of cool if they've already gathered my my information. Well, we have a lot more moving on with artificial intelligence, so I believe that we could start actually implementing more and more of that type of personal. We can, we can, and you know, you you go to a website. You purchase the services. They've got your information already because you've already made the purchase. When you go back, you've already got a cookie installed on your machine. Welcome back, Chris. Yeah, it's a great idea. You know, it's just one step closer to actually having a a human component. We realize that it's AI, Mm -hmm. but it's still nice to see your name there. To see well, my name, you, yes. you bring up a point. By 2020, customers will manage 85% of the relationship with an enterprise without interacting with a human. 20%. By 2020, customers will manage, they will manage 85% of the relationship with an enterprise without a human, which means mm. our technology along that customer experience journey. So I'm going, you know, we're still at the... Hi. Uh, We're still dating, so to speak. Oh, yeah. (laughs) Courtship. Courtship, yes. Uh, And making it more personal. And I think with AI, that's exactly what we're going to have or have the capability of doing. So then there comes the the dance, the sale, right? Mm -hmm. And what part um, of the sale part that you've enjoyed interacting with people or what's been your best Sales process. Of course, we teach seven steps of the sales process. So, um, which area is far which as which is all experience is based? Okay, you know, so um, because it goes well beyond um, just hello. But 
So what was the last thing that you purchased that you really enjoyed actually spending the money? Well, I think for me it's at the dollar store because a... Are you being sincere or are you being sarcastic? No, I'm being sincere for once. All right. Oh, listeners, if you only knew what I have to put up with. Couldn't be those steaks we bought. No, no, that was that would that would be a podcast in itself. See through stakes, yes, that's wonderful, wonderful. Candace strikes again. The object was that I think I liked about it is if you get the right store, you go through the checkout line, all that. They ask, did you find everything? And they have a little bit of side talk because they you you feel like you're having a conversation with them if they're doing their job right as they're taking care of the final transaction. You don't feel like you know they're. Okay, it's in the bag, it's in the bag, it's in the bag, you know, you're next. Um, some stores are really nice that way, and I feel comfortable that way. Other stores where they just come up and say, okay, thank you, card here, sign here, please, and have a nice day. It just doesn't feel, I could go home on a computer and do that. Sure. How you about know? you, Chris? Uh, I, you know, I'm kind of the same way, not with the dollar store, though, but when I've gone to, let's say, Sherry's, um, there's... There's a uh, server there that she just likes to converse with her customers. She actually takes the time to stop and she talks to you, not not about what you're ordering, but how you're doing that day. And I mean, she really takes an interest in her customers. And it's not just me, but I, I notice her doing that with every single one of her customers. And so I enjoy that. And she does the same thing. Before taking the order, she does the same thing before giving you the bill, and she might. I bet her tips are awesome. Do you do you tip her better? I I do. I tip her twenty five percent. Wow! I'll be at your table tomorrow. You aren't pretty enough, and you don't talk enough. (laughs) Talk nice enough. Oh, that's really what you're saying. (laughs) (laughs) I know. You know, it's interesting because you brought up a good point. Ricky Jays has changed over, and there's a new manager by the name of Sammy that's working. She'll stop in the middle of whatever she's doing. If she sees you come in, how you doing, wave, and then make a next loop around. It's been a long time since you've been in. You have her special, what's new, and you shoot the bull for a few moments. And you feel comfortable. You feel like you're, you, you're wanted to be there, okay? And they're right. going to serve you. And then all of a sudden, I'll get an email through. And just the other day, she put a big thank you so much for all your efforts of helping us at Ricky J's. I mean, that just wow. came out of nowhere. And to me, that makes me feel great because she is really on her toes and, and making you feel as a customer that there's a reason for you to be there. You know, one of the things that I enjoy uh, with that with that process are the questions that create a conversation. Because I think that whenever you have the, the strategic questions asked, you're actually dialing down really not only what my needs are, but what what is the desire? What is the um, the effect that I'm looking to have with whatever it is that I'm looking for? So I feel like the salesman or the the sales process creates that experience that price is no longer on the table. Although let's not act crazy, we're not gonna you know disregard how much something is. But is the value equal to the cost? And is it really what I what I need, want, and desire, or am I just being thrown something that at the end of the day I'm not going to be happy with? Very true. And so I think that that's that's a key element of that experience. I think you're right because really, when you get a salesman, he could sell you the most expensive equipment that they've got, but they choose not to because that's not what your need is. And so what they do is they ask questions to find out what your real need is. You might go in there thinking, hey, you know what? I need such and such. And it's the most expensive thing they've got at the rack. And he says, no, actually, you really don't need that much. You you could go with this and you'll be just as happy. And it's $200 cheaper. Well, I think it's a good point. And I I remember my grandfather who sold suits for Klottensteins. They used to be in Tacoma, Hart Schaefer and Marks. And uh, I talked to him so many times in some conversations about sales. And I said, you know, you've retired and they've called you back six times. How come? Or you'll get calls at home. And he said, well, yeah, the wives will usually call me up at home and say, well, my husband's going to a special meeting. He needs a suit. You know how to take care of him. I don't want him loose in the store. 
and mm -hmm. uh, they'll show up and come down. Grandfather always had a good line, talked with them, built a good rapport. He knew the size, the color, what the wife appreciated, but also what he looked good in, the actual gentleman himself. And he kept a bunch of three by five cards. When he passed away, there must have been a thousand of them. And I, I finally asked around because I couldn't figure it out how he knew all this stuff. Well, they would call. He'd disappear downstairs, pull out the card because he couldn't remember anybody's name. Pull out the card. He'd set him up. Say, okay, come out at three o'clock, send him out, and we'll have it all right. When do you need the suit? He would get the suit tailored, and then he would personally pick it up at the store and deliver it to the home. Well, that's, that's why they didn't want to go anywhere else. Absolutely. That's customer service. Absolutely. Because the wives were satisfied. The husbands looked good. The service was there. The price was right. And the quality was there. But there was also a relationship with the guy that, that, that transacted the sale. Well, and that's exactly what we're talking about with customer experience. Building that relationship. Here was an interesting uh, fact that I, I had gotten was that our relationship, our emotional relationship with a product is equal to the same relationship that bonds that you'll have with your spouse, with your best friend. Hmm. Now, that's, to me, both sad and absolutely brilliant. It's sad in the fact that I could, let's say, be tied to uh, M&Ms or something like that far more than, you know, maybe own my own spouse or a, a human. On the flip side, though, that tells me that by building those um, emotional bonds to my brand, uh, to my business, that people aren't likely to just go away. They're, even if I make a mistake and I flub it, there's, there's grace there. There's room to make it right. And they're not going to leave right away because we've built those bonds. So it's kind of like building bonds with Reese's peanut butter cup. Well, you should actually <laughs> build five emotional bonds to your brand and you have to de decide what emotions are you wanting to build? So part of that whole entire journey that you're doing is you're reinforcing those five brands without ever, you know, obviously telling the consumer. That's a, a back bar conversation yeah, for your marketing. Room. Yeah. But um, whenever you're discussing all of this, you, we can do that with pictures, with video, content. All of that is part of the experience because the experience shouldn't end at the time of the sale. Matter of fact, that's the beginning. It's the beginning of the relationship. And so what are what are some ideas or what are some follow-through actions after the sale that you've gotten from, uh, from a customer or, I mean, from a, a business that you've done business with that's, incre that's made you want to do more business with them? I think the best, one, best uh, example I can give is that uh, one of the gentlemen I used to work with all the time, he was telling me a story about... Well, I would go down and buy since a suit or shoes or a car or whatever. And then a couple of weeks later, I get a card in the mailbox. Uh, just wanted to drop you a line, see how you're doing, and, and let you know that in, a, in the future, I, I can be of service to you. And please, do me a favor and refer me to a friend if you wish. Yeah, a handwritten note. Handwritten note. Not something. Not a computer. I no, 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 no. Not no. something that you go and buy from the store. Absolutely. But a handwritten no. Card, even I mean, you, you buy a store bought card, nothing in it, but you write in that. And I know that Candace does that. Mm -hmm. She sends handwritten cards to her customers, thanking them for their business. And if she can never be of service, then they can give her a call. And so I think that is really, really smart, and it's really important because it says, "Hey, I." care enough to handwrite this note and to you. And to take time to do it. Yeah. Exactly. And to that I want to take care of you. And I value you as a customer. And I think that your business is wonderful. It It's absolutely amazing to me that more people don't do that. Well, I think it's to the point now where everybody's so busy. It you is know? busy. But if but you no want to of... increase your customer base... It's vital. Well, it's absolutely vital. I did an order, um, ordered some stuff online, and I actually got a letter from the CEO. And the letter...